Hello, future millionaires. Thanks for joining us today on the Get Rich Slow podcast. I'm joined today by my co-host, Robert Delavan. This is Adrian Shermer, and we have a special guest today, Eric Jonassi from Drive Accounting. Thanks so much for joining us and giving us your time today, Eric. Thank you. Appreciate being here. Good morning, Eric. Good to see you. Likewise. Eric has run Drive Accounting since, you said, 1992? Uh, used QuickBooks since 92. QuickBooks. Uh, started Drive in 2000. Nice. Yeah. So that's back when you were feeding punch cards into the computer or yeah, uh, not, not, not quite, but it was uh, just after. Yeah, it was different. We take, we take technology for granted. I mean, we'd uh, go things that we wait for now we're frustrated with and it used to take forever. So technology is crazy that way. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through that, Eric. And thank you <laughs> on behalf of the rest of us QuickBooks illiterates. <laughs> So I love it. Um, today, I wanted to jump right in. Um, we have a few questions for you. We wanted to uh, interview you based on the fact, Eric, I've worked with you for what, seven years now? Thereabouts, yeah. And we've gone through all sorts of different business uh, iterations. Uh, you have solved a lot of problems for me. Uh, the, the interesting thing about your world is uh, tax and financial planning actually, and frankly, which feeds into lending, always starts with accounting and bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that foundation, you're chasing your tail. Uh, the, the nightmare of every year, the CPA and the box of receipts, right? Um, Amen. Eric, <laughs> you have personally uh, made that a thing of the past for me. Um, so I, I appreciate you for that. Um, starting us off, uh, the, the first question I have for you is why did you get into your field? And what is your... The, the main driver to improve your craft? Well, I have two, two pieces there. I mean, um, I, I, I got into this. I was raising a small family business doing real estate and construction, and uh, I spent a lot of time on the job site. The rest of the time I spent in the office, and uh, we had learned how to you know, keep books with Lotus 1, 2, 3 and on, um, on ledgers and then, uh, and then Quicken and then moved over to QuickBooks in 92 when that came out. And so I, I kind of fell into that and I loved how easy QuickBooks made it to uh, really pull it all together compared to what it was before. Um, but I kind of did that at the time because that's what I knew. Um, I, a little bit of background here is I grew my uh, company to 17 employees before the recession in 2007. Mm. And uh, um, we weren't paying close enough attention to our numbers. We had kind of this perfect storm of a key employee's life falling apart, the recession, uh, my son being born and I was home more and, uh, and I just wasn't focusing on the, the business. And then the recession hit and a large number of our clients were real estate and uh, construction related. So things were dropping like flies. Um, I got out of the recession, shrinking down to myself and one person with a huge amount of debt and uh, started digging myself out of that hole. And uh, the reason that we got there is because we weren't paying close enough attention to our numbers. So that's frankly why I do what I do. I mean, it was halfway through this um, now, 12, 13, uh, 14 years ago um, and having to dig this out with those mistakes um, that really emboldened me and made me passionate about the numbers that we have, because I used to think I could grow this just by working harder, putting more time in and, um, and getting more stuff through. And I realized I was making the wrong decisions and I needed to make intentional informed decisions about my business. And I couldn't do that without information. And of course we were able to pull all the information together. It's just that we, we weren't practicing what we preached. Mm -hmm. So now I'm methodical about it. And it's one of the reasons I see so many small businesses struggling and it's because they're, they're on that treadmill running as fast as they can, hoping that if I, if I just do more, it'll all take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. it's usually that they're not being proactive about their business. And you see that really in times like what we've experienced this last year. We see a lot of businesses um, down, but I have, um, I have the vast majority of our clients that are having incredible years um, in spite of the, um, or rather despite the, um, uh, the pandemic here. So, Just and it's because they're focusing on numbers. Which is funny because uh, a lot of the business folks that I've talked about, talked to, they say they either gained 15 pounds or the COVID-19, right? They either gained 19 <laughs> pounds or they lost 19 pounds. I won't say yep. which one I am. Yeah. Um, 
but, and then also with their businesses, conversely, they also basically had banner years or they had, you know, worst year ever going right. out of business, all of that sort of thing. And it really can kind of come back to, you know, what are the fundamentals of their business, which is obviously your focus. Um, who who is it who's more. having a good 2020, Eric? What, what industries are you seeing stretch their legs rather than... <laughs> I, I can't say it's industries in general because I see people in the same industries, um, you know, one that's making it, one that's not, you know. Um, I think the, the number one factor that I've seen are people who are constantly trying to build a better mousetrap in their business, people who are constantly looking at, okay, hey, this didn't work. How can I do this better? How can I become more efficient? Um, figuring out where I can trim the fat. And that's what we get with our, you know, with our income statements and our, um, and our budgets and whatnot, paying attention to where our money's going, but also paying attention to where it's coming from. Um, you know, saying no to certain things and really focusing on the most profitable. And again, that's where I get that from all the information that I have. But um, it's the companies that are doing that irregardless of industry. Because I've even seen restaurants. I know that Rob, Rob has sure. a client that has a pizza shop that is mm -hmm. um, five times, I think is what, uh, I think he has five times the revenue. Um, yeah. the, the verbiage I, I heard from Chris, our uh, accounting manager, was that this guy was bringing in money quicker than he could spend it. And so it's, um, which <laughs> is a great problem to have, but yeah. then you have other restaurants that have, uh, I think you get a lot of people that are resting on the laurels, you know, who are just kind of coasting. And frankly, you can't do that in, um, you can't do that in business and really succeed. The ones that are making it are the ones that are finding a better way. Sure. Sure. And I think that's one of our pillars here is the idea that you got to get this stuff kind of ducks in a row. What am I going to do when things get too busy? Um, not I'll deal with that once I'm already too busy to deal with it. Um, I witnessed that as I, you know, analyze financials for people every day. Yeah. I see the people who are doing really, really well. Um, and I see, yeah, a lot of loss and a lot of missed opportunity, um, which sounds goofy when someone's making great money, but, um, yeah. Yeah, people want to keep uh, turning the gears themselves, and you got to kind of stop back, step back, and I think Rob, what was that term you used? Fire yourself every once yeah. in a while. You got to get really good at firing yourself um, from <laughs> jobs that you've just, you know, you've got to stop doing, or you're not going to be able to get that forest for the trees view of everything. Right. And I've taken that uh, that uh, page out of Rob's book, and it has made a tremendous difference in what uh, we do here at Drive. Um, I am, and and that goes back to saying no. Um, we, we all need to really focus on our strengths and there are things in our company that only I can do. Um, I get in the habit and I think we all do of saying, oh, you know what? I can just do that. It'll take me 15 minutes. And, but if I don't figure out a way to delegate that and get that off my plate, it's going to take me 15 minutes every single time I need to do it. And it's taking away from this other stuff that I really need to do. So it's, um, yeah, that, my big thank you is to Rob on that one because uh, I saw you live it and I saw what it's been doing for you, your business and the people you work with. And it's been, um, it's already worked wonders for us. Yeah, hey, I think, what was the quote you came up with, Eric? <laughs> I get a lot more done now that I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's, um, and and it's, it's true because it, it sucks to have too much on your plate and just start dropping the ball and, um, yeah, you know. You're playing because, triage. Because you say yes to everything. And it goes yeah. back to that urgent and important quadrant, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that, you know, um, and where we focus a lot of the time on the urgent rather than the important. And it's, mm -hmm. um, um, it is the, um, it's that stuff that's not urgent, but important that we need to be focusing on. And so it's, uh, you know, to really grow our businesses and it's counterproductive to what happens when you're in that triage mode playing firefighter. Yeah. Yeah. And saying yes to everything is probably how you get that initial boom, right? Like people love that energy oh, yeah. out there. If you're a yes to everything person, I mean, we've witnessed this in, in BNI, right? The people who are, yeah. you know, yeah, I'll take on anything. Um, and then you watch it happen. You watch them reach that breaching point <laughs> and it's, uh, um, yeah. it sucks cause it stales, you know, it staggers you out for a while. You really right. gotta, it takes time to rebuild trust once you've, you've. Once you drop the ball like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, Business. which which segs us nicely to my second question. Um, and I would actually ask you to focus on, like you, you said, saying no. Um, and saying no is very important because it allows us to specialize and be really, really good at what it is that we do. But the second question was, how do, how do your services better set a person up to build wealth? 
um, with that saying mm -hmm. no in mind. Um, but yeah. what building blocks do you provide? So it all goes back to information. Um, I mentioned that I do budgets for expenses. I also do budgets on revenue. And so one of the things that we, so here at Drive, we're, you know, there's different things that I track daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually. And uh, they're different things. And it takes me, you know, five minutes a day to pull, uh, pull all these numbers and look at them. So longer when we're doing monthly and quarterly, et cetera. But um, there are things that we're able to pay attention to that we, that we don't have otherwise. So um, in that, some of the things that we look at are, Hey, what's so internally, we do a lot of bookkeeping. We do a lot of bookkeeping cleanups as well. So these are people, I have a gentleman I'm helping right now that is um, uh, last year filed was 2016 for his taxes. He had a CPA that was actually doing his bookkeeping taxes and payroll and has stuff updated through mid 18. Um, I saw her, him write her checks through 19 and taxes still aren't filed. So it's a, it's a shame, but we're, we do a lot of those. Um, we also do a lot of our QuickBooks consulting. We figured out what it made sense not to do. Um, you know, so, so we have um, a lot of clients that, we, so I have a marketing client who wants us to pretty much take care of everything in his business. Now we could totally do it, but it, again, it's less profitable for us. We end up uh, doing a lot of back and forth that we're not billing for. We, we figured out large, um, large clients that need us more than a day a week aren't a good fit for us. Um, there are a lot of bookkeepers that will do it. I just passed one on to uh, Scott from our, uh, from our BNI group, a uh, contract CFO, because he's able to bring people in and take care of this whole company. So anyway, um, figuring out what makes profitable sense, what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing and getting that stuff off my plate. That's the biggest differentiator to make certain that we're using our time wisely. And a typical person that has basically that shoebox, right? Yeah. What would be the advice that you would give them? Obviously my advice to them is hire your company, <laughs> hire an accountant. Um, yeah. which I've been doing. If you've got the um, shoebox, you've got the problem. <laughs> right. But what would, where would be a great place for them to start? Well, it's like that dog that's uh, barking on the porch and it says, why is he barking? Well, he's sitting on a nail. Well, why doesn't he move? Well, it doesn't hurt bad enough yet. And <laughs> that's where a lot of uh, our clients are coming in here. Um, and, you know, frankly, I was a bit in this um, in the same boat prior to 2007 to where I was running and not getting my own stuff done. Um, and so I know what it feels like to be in that role. And um, so you you just have to make a decision that, okay, what I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of this stuff being behind. I'm tired of laying awake at night, not knowing where I'm at and not being able to plan. Cause I think what I do. And I think a lot of people, we offset uneasiness or uh, fear. We offset it with uh, an offset risk with information, mm -hmm. you know? And so making that choice to actually do something is, is that first one. Um, as far as actual tactical things, um, if you're starting a new business, make certain right away, you have a different bank account. Um, that that's the yep. number one thing. Um, the, the less commingling that you can do between business and personal makes it a lot easier to bring stuff up. Um, I have a client that, um, had a business account, but also put a lot of stuff through their personal. Um, we had to go through their personal account now and every transaction in there. And we get to see some things that uh, maybe they don't want us to see, but, you know, sure. go through and highlight anything that's business related. Um, it's setting up these processes and this rhythm, this cadence to make certain that it doesn't have to be a chore, you know, and then, then you get into this gallop and, you know, Rob, I know you were in the same boat and so was I, um, we had each of, we work at the same CPA and we sat down with her in, uh, November and said, Hey, this is, this is how we're looking for the year. Um, this is where we think we're going to end up, you know, based on this, what should we do? And Hey, wh what are our taxes going to look like? The actual filing of the taxes, taxes is just a formality at that point. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's those systems, those processes, that cadence that keeps going through. And I'll tell you what, I don't sweat it anymore. And I was also able to make some great decisions, which saved me a bunch of money on tax also, you know, even in a, uh, nice. even in a banner year. So yeah. it's, um, but if you're not in that rhythm, 
then it always becomes work. And that rhythm may be hiring someone. It may be just a matter of keeping track of your transactions and once a month sitting down and totaling them, depending on the size and operations of your business. So I'm going to actually jump forward to, uh, I was going to ask you any tax accounting hacks that you can lay on the audience. Obviously, having a bookkeeper uh, accountant is one of them. Not everybody has the luxury of that. Um, But you mentioned a big one, and that is sit down with your CPA before the end of the year with your books to date, and then you can actually make decisions. Uh, Both you and I talked multiple times about uh, what uh, things you can do but uh, to minimize your tax liability. But at the end of the day, you can only do that before a lot of them before the end of the year. After Correct. the year's over, you can't do it anymore. Um, yeah. What else would you lay on the audience um, from a bookkeeping, tax accounting um, hack or, or advice, just simple things? Yeah, so um, yeah, your taxes, as you said, should never be a surprise. You should know where you're at before that time comes. Um, and um, the you you mentioned it being a luxury. Um, I'll tell you what: if you have a good bookkeeper, if you have someone that knows what they're doing, they are going to save you more money than you are paying them. And it's um, yes, there's the compliance piece of needing to pull everything together. But if you have someone that knows the information is right and they can explain that it's right and um, and enable you to make good business decisions, um, now. Granted, I'm biased here, but I've seen it in my own business. I don't track the books in our own business. I have someone else do that, and then I'm reviewing the top end of it. And I'll tell you, without that, I couldn't make the decisions that I make. So um, whether you're doing it yourself or having someone do it, get in that that cadence is the most important thing. Um, How's you know, that we, for a testimony to the craft? So an accountant has their own accountant. That's how important it is to have. Oh, granted, it's, it's someone from outside my company. View. Don't get me. No, it's, yeah, it's, sure. it's still someone from my company that's doing it. But, um, you know, doing the books isn't what turns me on. It, it's it's what I can do with that information. It's mm, now, sure. it's that planning. It's that entrepreneurial spark that we all have when we start this and saying, okay, hey, I can do this and this. And so I end up meeting with a lot of people who have just been beaten down by business and it's, it's become a chore and you can see it. You can see it in their postures. They're sitting, there's this shame that goes around it. And as you're starting to give them information and as you're starting to talk through this, you can see them, um, you know, start to perk back up. You can see them, um, you, you can see that entrepreneurial spark relight and then get re-impassioned and emboldened about their business. That's why I do what I do. I love to see that in people. And um, so anyway, you, you just have to start doing something and get in that rhythm because if you're not in the rhythm, it doesn't, um, it doesn't work out. That's uh, that's, I love that. Um, which the, so the last question I have for you is, and we ask every guest that we have and we'll continue to do this is how can the everyday lay person figure out whether their accountant bookkeeper is truly top of their field and just some techniques or some questions they can ask. And the reason, and I couch this question almost every time with, uh, in my industry as a realtor, 80% of the revenue is driven by 20% of those in the field. So that means basically the other 80% Mm -hmm are only making 20% of the revenue. And there's a, obviously a dichotomy there that, that is, <laughs> yeah. we can unpack on a whole nother podcast at some point. Um, but it's very, there's a few questions that I recommend asking a fellow realtors that just basically create a stark contrast between whether you're one of the producers or not. So how would you recommend someone like, like myself, who's a novice in the bookkeeping world, mm-hmm. um, you know, go out and shop for their bookkeeper. So there's a few different uh, things there. Um, so at Drive, we realize that most of our business comes directly from CPAs. Um, CPAs, you know, if, if I'm doing a cleanup for you and your stuff's three years behind, we're not sharing a drink and saying, hey, hey I'm three years behind on my taxes. There's this, <laughs> um, you know, unfortunately, there's a shame that goes around money, you know, as we're all... Um, yeah. And, um, so as a result, I, you know, one of the things I crave are genuine relationships. I can't help someone if they're not willing to open up and be honest and whatnot with me and of course with themselves. But, um, um, so with this, they are talking with their CPA 
So that's why we build these relationships with the CPAs. They hate doing this work. I actually got two referrals this morning from two different CPAs um, that don't want to do cleanup work and um, or even the maintenance. They want to focus on their tax. The reason that they refer to us is for a few different reasons. They um, So nine out of 10 bookkeepers that I run into cannot read a financial statement. Mm. They're just doing data entry and they don't know when they've made a mistake. So now I'm a bookkeeper, don't know, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I'm rolling things forward, but I don't know what it's supposed to be like because I only have a small handful of clients and I'm giving you information. You think it's right and you're making decisions based upon it and then you find out it's wrong. So there's tax implications, but more importantly, there's business implications if you're making um, important decisions on bad information. So one, they need to know their accounting and you can tell that um, if they can explain what's going on between the balance sheet and the profit and loss, and they can tell you um, the relationship between the two and everything that's happening line by line, um, that's, that's a good first indicator that they know what they're doing. If they can't explain it, they don't understand it well enough. So okay, so they need to be able to explain it to someone who doesn't understand it. There you go. So simplifying it down to explaining exactly what, where you're at right now and, yes. and, and what perspective that provides. Well, and comprehensively. I mean, okay. you know, um, yes, it can be about one thing, but you, they need to, to go through. So Rob, you've seen the file reviews that I do is, mm-hmm. um, you know, we go through every single balance sheet and every single profit and loss and, um, you know, account and make certain things are right and where they should be. Someone should be able to do that. And often there are a lot of unreconciled items and things that aren't correct on, um, on there, which is feeding bad information. Um, second thing is, um, you know, that's really big uh, for CPAs is bandwidth. Um, so they've gone through, they finally found a bookkeeper to refer to that knows what they're doing. They, they offload a half dozen clients to this person. And, and this person um, is, again, doing the best they can, but now they're overwhelmed. And they have a couple choices. They can either say, hey, CPA, I can't take on any more work, at which point the CPA has got to find a new bookkeeper and go through that trial and error and everything again, or they take on the work, which unfortunately is what usually happens. And they hope they can get it done running faster on the treadmill in their own business as well. Yeah. And eventually they start dropping the ball at which point the CPA has got to find another bookkeeper as well. So um, Rob, you mentioned the 80, 20 with the, uh, with the realtors, that 20% that's doing 80% of the work, they're doing more work. And you don't become a master at something unless you're doing a lot of it over and over and over again, and it becomes second nature. Um, these bookkeepers that have four, five, six clients, um, you know, 10, 20 clients, you know, you know, even they um, they're not seeing enough of the spectrum of business to really be an expert. And they may be really good at what they're doing. Um, the, the third one, and I don't put a lot of stock into this, but there are certifications that you can get as well, but a lot of them are pretty easy. Um, we're all pro advisors here at Drive, which means that we've given into it uh, some money. We uh, get to put their logos on our site and we've taken their tests. Um, there's 200,000 pro advisors in the US. So it's a pretty low you know, bar. Um, we're one of about a thousand Intuit solution providers. So it's a program that Intuit reserves for their highest um um, highest QuickBooks and accounting professionals. So um, we're able to bring more to the table that way. Um, and Adrian, I do not have a dog in my office. So um, <laughs> the and our next guest. <laughs> yes. The um, but anyway, so those um, uh, those certifications and whatnot matter. Um, you know, they do matter. But the last one is get referrals if they or mm-hmm. references rather. If they are good at what they do, they can send you a half dozen CPAs that they've worked with. They can send you other business professionals that they have worked with and uh, ask for a past client. You know, I'll, I'll often give referrals to or references rather to people that we no longer work with anymore and mm-hmm. saying, hey, yeah, we don't work together for this reason. And this is how it worked out because, hey, we're not perfect. We've dropped the ball. But I'll tell you what, I don't lose sleep because I know one of our core values is uh, doing what's right because it's right. And I know when I'm laying in bed that while not every file that we've worked on, not every relationship has worked out well, if you do what's right because it's right and you take care of that first and let the money take care of itself, then um, then the, the clients in most cases, you know, um, you know, leave with a good feeling. Yeah, so. I love that. 
Um, obviously you have a lot of passion for what you do. Uh, the tools that you've provided to me for my business, um, are incredible and it allows you to take that next step in planning for taxes, planning for finances, financial planning. And uh, what's ended up happening for me, and this is a direct relationship with everything that I've worked with with you, is at the end of the day, when you save on tax or have a reduced tax liability, so tax savings, then you turn around and invest that either back into the business or mm -hmm. in retirement, wealth building activities, real estate, um, and, and so on. And it just, it, it is the foundation for what we're doing uh, in this uh, building well slow. So I love, yeah. I just love that. Um, the, yeah, is there, do you have any other words of wisdom to drop on our, uh, our audience here? Small incremental decisions. Um, what you're talking about is putting that, you know, putting that tax savings away. Um, you know, it, it doesn't even have to be much, but you, you do something and let it build upon each other. It's that whole compounding and, uh, it works with our behavior as well. And so, um, the, I think that cadence and that rhythm is the, is the number one thing that has set me free. It's the, it, it's those processes, those systems and, and saying no. I love it. Love it. Well, th thank you so much for that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the wisdom, Eric. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll have to grab another chunk of your time at some point. Cause I feel like there's a lot more to unpack here, but that's a great primer on what it takes to get into having an accountant and, Hopefully for our audience, we've dispelled what may be kind of the myth out there that again, this is just for someone who's at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Clearly there's a way that you can, you know, work yourself into using someone's services like yours. And um, we're going to say this over and over again, guys, but these kind of services pay for themselves. Eric, you save, you know, you, you save more money or you build more wealth than you, than you cost, obviously. Um, right. As evidenced by many glowing reviews, including Rob's here. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, I uh, love it. Uh, it's it's just those simple concepts that that we're trying to uh, spread to the audience. So uh, thank you for taking the time, especially during this busy tax season. Um, we will definitely try to twist your arm once tax season is over, and uh, maybe we'll have a whiskey lineup or something like that. I'd love the opportunity and All the right. whiskey. Yeah, of course. <laughs> thank you again. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next.